Hi, I'm Claudia Osteen. I'm an interdisciplinary artist and assistant professor of fine arts at Winthrop University in South Carolina. So in my work, I combine a wide range of media such as performance, sculpture, video, drawing, um, installation. My work is highly research-based and I often collaborate across disciplines. Um, this top image is me looking at a glacier in the, uh, in the Arctic. The bottom image is a collaboration with NASA's Airborne Science Program in Mountain View, California. So in my work, I develop systems, processes, and tools to understand something, and then I'll repeat that process over and over, and then I examine the failures, abnormalities, or anomalies in that process. So a lot of my work is somehow about the idea of failure, and I often attempt things that I know were impossible. Um, for example, in this first image, um, this was a collaborative project, and I was following the, in the footsteps of a failed Arctic explorer. I also look for the moments when technology fails to capture something in the world around us. Failure itself draws a distinction. Where failure occurs, there is a frontier. It marks the edge of the acceptable or possible, a boundary fraught with possibilities. This mixes certainty and insecurity. It taunts us to try again and tells us firmly to stay back. The failure tells us clearly where our limitations at the moment are. A few minutes later, it might be different. So in this body of work, Leveling Network, um, it focuses around a tide gauge in Kronstadt, Russia. I completed a residency here at the Russian National Center for Contemporary Art in St. Petersburg, and I became really interested in this place. Um, so the yellow building that you see here is, the, is that where the tide gauge is housed, and this is the zero level of the Baltic, Baltic system of depths and heights. So analog tide measurements began in Kronstadt in the 1700s by order of Peter the Great, and this was originally done as a protection against flooding from the Gulf of Finland. And these measurements continued throughout time and they're still completed today. So this makes the Kronstadt tide gauge one of the largest archives of tidal data. And originally the, um, the measurements were done uh, just below this bridge, um, they were analog measurements where they would literally just look at the water line up against um, this ruler-like tool. Um, then they started to use a, uh, a weighted system that would um, bob up and down with the water and mark onto a piece of paper, which was still another um, slightly more complex um, analog way to uh, measure this tidal data. And so just to give you a sense of where Kronstadt is, um, here's St. Petersburg, Russia, and here's Kronstadt. It's located about an hour outside of St. Petersburg. Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space, and he called Kronstadt the hub of the universe because all depths and altitudes, even the heights of spacecraft, are measured from the sea level measurements taken from that exact spot. Uh, the island was not open to the public, even to Russians, until several years after the fall of the Soviet Union, so the research process has been really complicated and full of holes. Um, and because all measurements are based on data collected at the single location, it's often viewed as obsolete. And actually some surrounding Baltic countries are in the process of transitioning from the system of measurement, which means that there will be about a 10 inch increase in absolute heights. So I was really interested in that process of switching over. So on my first trip to Russia, I developed my own process for collecting tide measurements, knowing that they would be susceptible to human error and other environmental factors. And this is a video that explores that process. I created my own devices for this, and I also did drawings to document the conditions that existed there that day. Um, something else I was interested in was the bridge next to the station because different types of surveys have been carried out here for a long time, even before the tide gauge structure was built. Uh, and you'll see the, um, 
the image to the on the left of the screen here, these two bars. The turquoise color is the actual color that the blue bridge appeared in person, or as it appeared in person. And this is uh, a scan of an analog tide gauge that I created. And in this video, you'll just see me going through my process that I carried out each day, twice a day, to measure the tides there. So through my studio window, I could see the dome of the city's naval cathedral, and this sort of became a beacon for me and started to inform my process. So through my research, I found that the dome was used to survey and map the city, and later it was used as a lookout point for the Russian and Soviet navies. I also used the dome for navigation, and I could always um, place where I was by locating it. I could even see it from the airplane when I was leaving, so it just made sense to me that this would become part of the project. Um, this object or this, um, this structure is now used as an icon and a measuring device or marker in my installation. And actually while I was there doing any in-depth research on Kronstadt or the tide gauge was difficult because so few people on the island spoke any English at all and there isn't very much literature about the tide gauge that has been translated. So before leaving for Kronstadt, I tried to understand the city through a novel that took place there. Um, so I used text from the book in combination with my excerpts from my own journals in this video. We set up the sea level gauge and lowered the weighted buoy into the canal. My hands stung from the cold wind as I unfurled the rope. The place where we dropped the gauge was right next to the permanent tide staff bolted to the blue bridge. I want to come up with some sort of key to record what I do and how I measure. Кронштадт сам по себе расположен в форме английской буквы V. Называя часть буквы направленную в сторону моря, а открытая часть в сторону Санкт-Петербурга. Мир лежит на этом белом, как мел, пустынном острове, созданном Богом в Финском заливе для защиты России. And so this is actually um, an image of the um, the naval cathedral dome that you could see when I went out on a boat. And so anywhere I was in the city, even when I was in St. Petersburg, I would try to locate uh, where I was in relation to the Naval Cathedral. So in my work, I often use sculpture as a tool for observation and measuring, and I create my own devices to interrogate the landscape. A year later, a year after uh, the first video that I showed was taken, I visited Kronstadt for the second time, this time in summer, and this time I brought objects and instruments that I devised after my first trip and used them on site. I created my own logo, surveyor benchmark, and surveyor flag, and this became a performative process. I also became interested in the way that the city uses the tide gauge, their daily collection of analog and digital measurements, and what role this analog ritual plays in the community. Because this tide gauge has some of the oldest collection of measurements in the world, I started to wonder how it might be used to look at sea level rise and changing coastlines. I have talked a lot with researchers at the Moscow State Oceanographic Institute to understand what role, if any, the tide gauge plays in their research. And because of the way um, information was handled during the Soviet era, throughout perestroika and into current Russia, there are a lot of gaps in the information. So it was hard to um, understand or it seemed as if um, 
this title data didn't play a huge role in the way that um, these scientists are understanding climate change and how it's affecting the region because there are so many gaps in the data. So the bridge at the side of the tide gauge is called the Blue Bridge and it's an important part of Kronstadt's history and the color of it is often referred to in association with the tide gauge and it's used for giving directions to the site. I learned through my research that the color was relevant or important to the history of the bridge but no one could ever tell me why or I couldn't ever find out and so um, this sort of became a mystery and uh, something that I was trying to understand and I wanted to communicate that I was trying to understand the importance of this color throughout the work. Uh, so I wanted my, my search process um, or my search to understand the relevance of this bridge and its name and color to really be evident and so the color, the true color of the bridge appears in several different places in the installation. I also took samples of the, <coughs> excuse me, I also took samples of the blue bridge taken from photographs from each day of the performance of collecting tide level measurements so that your understanding of the color and the bridge itself would change. Um, and actually each day that I went out to the tide gauge, I tried to wait for the women that would come to collect the analog tidal measurements because the, the daily ritual was really important to me and I really wanted to understand that and understand the importance of that. And, um, and I, I didn't actually ever see the people collecting the tidal measurements until the very last day that I was there and the woman was walking away um, as I arrived and um, she didn't speak any English, so I wasn't able to communicate with her. And so I was just left with this image of her walking away with the evidence of um, the tidal measurements, the tidal data from that day. So after conducting field work, collecting measurements and documentation, I try to understand how the objects can be used in the gallery space, but still refer to their previous life. I created a device based upon a version of an old analog mariograph and used it to display the drawings. Um, I made an instrument that's a cross between a slide rule and a tidal staff that uses the Naval Cathedral Dome as the slide, and it's paired with drawings that document the daily data I collected as a way of communicating that measurements and surveys were being taken of the coastline, the water level, and the city itself. The viewer can also measure or try to understand themselves in relation to the tide measurements. So through this work, I look at Kronstadt's failure my own, and my own failure to collect accurate measurements, um, look at the, the gaps that exist in the data and understand where they are and why and how those might manifest in my own work. So I was really interested in this failure at communication, at measuring, and at determining changing landscape. The tide is a dynamic force. It is not only the extremes of high and low that characterize its role in our lives, but the transitions between the two, the flood and the ebb.